the heat from the aluminum. Getting it away is the issue. It's really not a whole lot of heat. We're not going to put a radiator in the car like a radiator. This is a heat sink. It's just a little radiator. It's a can with two tubes. Uh, one tube goes to the end, one's at the end, uh, with, with fins, just like our fin heat sink. Mm -hmm. Instead of having this up in the hump, we'll put it down in the airflow underneath the car. Right. It's a solid yeah. piece. It can be in the weather. It can be in the airstream. It'll get rid of the heat fine. As I say, it's not a great deal of heat, particularly spread out among some water. We'll use braided. It's this is a rubber hose with a braided steel um, covering and some AN fittings from. I think we're using Air Equip AN this six time. is yep. going to be the size because we don't even need a lot of water moving through this. We got to say, yeah. Uh, storage tank over here um, actually we got three or four different kinds I don't know what we're going to use yet this one has little threaded um, fittings at the bottom for a flare but I can screw those out and we can put a AN somehow fitting. get to an AN6 and this will simply let me I'll put this at the uh, um, I guess we put this Put the pump at the bottom and put this at the top. That at the top. And, and that way we can migrate air out of our system and uh, out of our pump and avoid cavitation. And this will just be a little uh, thermos bottle, if you will. That's where we'll add our glycol and mm -hmm. water into the system. It'll go through the hoses. I've got two pumps here. A Bosch. Um, 0392022002. Oh. Made in Germany. <laughs> it's a PCA 12 volt. I put 12 volts on this and it pumps. I've got to somehow get from these uh, tube fittings to an AN fitting, but we can work that out. 95 bucks from our Mini Cooper project. We remember Messier. Um, these guys do a fantastic pump. This will last. Yep three cars and we get all this stuff um, from the custom rod guys who are coming your way uh, EV land um, but they do this sort of thing all the time gorgeous yeah. Yeah. components uh, for race cars this is a race car uh, cooler uh, uh, usually for something like a transmission, transmission oil cooler, sure. or um, you know something like that um, there's some more effective ones. I like the look of this, the size of it, the weight, and it would be very easy to mount uh, low in Underneath, the car, yeah. and it would uh, not be subject to damage or weather, um, that sort of thing. And so I think that'll be good. The company I get these from is called Summit Racing. They have a website. Let's uh, put that up, but uh, they're also on eBay. They don't give this stuff away. I think that, uh, Heat sink is about 158 bucks. Um, the the bottles another hundred and a quarter. Uh, just this little piece of hose is 20 bucks, something like yep. that. These fittings are five or a few ten bucks. dollars yep. a piece. Um, this is what one of the AN fittings that goes on the hose uh, looks like. And Brian's going to do a whole segment um, on hose assembly for the mini that I've got in the can that you haven't seen uh, yet. <laughs> we'll maybe put it with this show. And, um, uh, but these are aircraft grade, uh, aluminum, uh, fittings with braided steel, uh, hose. And we're going to put together, uh, a cooling. Actually, I'm going to talk about all this. Somebody's going to put together <laughs> oh, a <okay>. really cool <laughs> looking, really cool looking race. setup quality <laughs> aviation quality cooling system for me <laughs> all focused on this chill plate and water will go through the chill plate right under here uh, hardly raise our profile not even an inch um, mm -hmm. and the bolts will go through the Curtis controller through the two chill plates uh, two pieces of chill plate through the fiberglass and be securely mounted right. in the car. That'll be it. And that'll be a very neat installation. We will have um, two uh, outlets 
for the water on one side. I want those to go out with 90s. Here they are. Right down through the, uh, and we'll do all this behind, uh, underneath, in a quite hidden fashion, um, to the pump and the uh, uh, heat exchanger. Right. We'll have to have this out in the engine compartment somewhere where it's handy, where we can take this off and okay. check our fluid level and mm -hmm. add 50% uh, glycol, 50% uh, water uh, combination mm -hmm. in that. And, um, of course, there's an opportunity here for me to uh, play Arduino <laughs> with some sort of little um, um, cool. thermocouple on mm -hmm. the heat sink itself, um, modulating uh, how much current I put on the pump. And um, how much water volume. So okay. I'm not pumping burn 12 this all the time. amps of 12 volt into a Messier when it doesn't need all, all right. that. Um, and that'll keep my uh, power consumption low. This is a hopelessly complex system compared to a fan and a heat sink, but I think we'll, I think I'm going to have control of the heat on this Curtis. If it doesn't put out 550 amps, it won't be because it's hot. No, it's it just won't. It's gonna, we're, <laughs> that's just not gonna happen. Yep. Uh, we're gonna have a killer cooling system for the controller. And we're going to have a uh, pretty good one with a fan or maybe two fans blowing up the skirt of that motor because we need the maximum power we can get from this system. We do. To make the yep. performance of this yep. car be something that you would find attractive. And it's going to, I think it's going to take those two things to do that. My fear is that we have the car running and it's working great and, and it's really not putting out full power because of thermal linear cutback and, and we not even know it. That we could have more power if we just had gotten rid of the heat. Yeah, right. And um, so yeah. we're going to take this heat thing head on uh, right from the get go. And if we overbuild it. We'll never know that either, but at least, get, get we, we, you know, what do you want? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can have a Wego, less <laughs> money, uh, less trouble. They'll make it for you. <laughs> Uh, we're making cars for big boys. I would say this um, this speedster part die is going to be pretty close to sixty thousand dollars. However you do it, if you do it yourself, you might get it down to fifty three or fifty four. Yep. But it's a non non um, trivial amount of money. It'll be a great fun little car to drive. Um, I think we'll get back pretty close to our hundred miles. I'm telling everybody seventy five. But I think with that reason, I think so. it's going to be pretty good. But we have to get the maximum power out of this controller and that motor, and that means heat management, and we're going to kind of overdo it. If you um, are doing this at home and doing your own, that aluminum heat sink and a fan, if you can figure out how to mount it all with this yeah, that's controller, the, yeah. um, is, is going to uh, is the it issue. Would, it would do it. Uh, the problem is I wind up with all this heat management right there at the controller. I want to use this ch chill plate to get this down to a simple installation and hide all this stuff after buying the shiny aluminum version. Yeah, and then we'll hide it. I want to hide <laughs> it down around the transaxle and the, and we'll the never see it and the underside <laughs> of the car where nobody will see it. Uh, and that'll keep this installation clean and easy to deal with, uh, but it'll get the heat away from this and over to that, um, and it's, that's the best way I know how to do it. Brain, you guys took this to Lucian, and you came back with enough holes in this thing to be a cheese. Um, show me, baby, how is this thing going to, how, how are you going to put this together? and make it work. I believe you, I just want to see it. And this is going to involve some cleaning and some gasketing uh, to make this uh, effective. But uh, show me the stuff here. Let's uh, All right. let's swap places and I'm, I'm going to let you uh, walk us through the whole process here. Well, we're going to, we've... I'll just get we've, out of your way. All right, let me get a, let me get a rag here. I'll get you one. Okay, there we go. So, so what we're going to do is just take brake clean. You know, this is, doesn't leave any residue. We want to make sure 
that, this, that the surface is prepped clean. We already know that it's, that it's flat. Um, we've had it, we had it machined. So we're going to clean this once. We're going to go ahead and just clean it again, fingerprints, things like that. Make sure that we've got it all off of there and let this dry for a second. While that's setting, we're going to show you some of the, uh, some of the things that we're going to be using. Um, we're going to use Permatex and it's a anaerobic gasket maker. So that means that we're going to put this in here, unlike silicon, this is going to set up without the presence of air. And that's what we're not going to have in here. This is going to be anaerobic. So we're going to use a little surface prep that's going to allow this, and it's going to have to dry a couple of minutes, that'll allow this Permatex uh, anaerobic gasket maker to, uh, to set. So it's going to take us a 